This video is made possible by EA Game Changers. What is going on guys? Ben Gulligan here coming back at you with another video. And if you see me looking down to my right at any point during this video, it's because I am looking at my laptop screen as opposed to my monitor where I usually play. That's where my webcam is set up. And huge shout out of course to EA for flying me out to Los Angeles to EA Play to film Madden 19 gameplay before launch. If you guys are new here, I would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button for more Madden 19 content uh, prior to the game's launch. And of course, into the Madden 19 season as well. So I figured what would be fun, you know, to do for Madden 19 while I'm in EA play, while I'm in California, and that's a fantasy draft to kind of, you know, see how it plays out this year, see what each attributes can be, uh, you know, used to build that sick team that I'm looking for. So young players really is what I'm looking for. And if you saw John Gruden earlier, <laughs> looks so ridiculous uh, on the phone. It's hilarious to watch. But of course, we are faced with a really tough decision for our first pick, which is based on positional value, based on youth, you're thinking also about development, and you're thinking about which players might not be there uh, in the upcoming rounds. We're kind of motoring through this fantasy draft, and I was thinking, you know, there are a ton of really talented players on the board. You look at a lot of the best defensive players in the NFL are available. Quarterbacks went a little bit earlier. My pick was somewhere around uh, the mid rounds but i decided to go with bobby wagner and of course he does his superstar development so he's coming out flashing the guns with the superstar development trait i thought it'd be a very solid pick secure the middle of our defense off the bat with a speedy sideline to sideline middle linebacker that's you know going to be up there for defensive player of the year nearly every year while he's in his prime right now and i said let's go ahead go with another defensive player here and i said let's go with darius slay he has star development, so of course he's only going to show, uh, you know, the one flex arm, the one right arm flex. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, but Darius Slay, another super young player, had eight interceptions last year, which was tied for the NFL League lead, I believe, with Kevin Byard. And then I said, I, I keep saying, I didn't say any of this, but then I figured to myself during the time, this was recorded about two weeks ago or so, let's focus a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. I didn't really see anything I liked too much. And I'm looking at these positions, and again, it's a combination of development, youth, and skill. You gotta factor all those three things, and for me, skill, honestly, is probably the least important of those three at the time. And Lynn and Collins jumped out immediately to me as a player that I wanted to take of the New York Giants. He should probably have better than quick development, and also... He doesn't have a face scan, which is a little bit concerning. Hopefully, at some point, EA gets that in. But Landon Collins, one of the best safeties in the NFL. Of course, one of the bright spots on the New York Giants. And then Le'Veon Bell would be our first offensive pick to follow that up. The best running back in the NFL, in my opinion. There are some that are very, very close, like David Johnson. But coming off of injury, I'm going to stick with Le'Veon Bell for right now. And looked at wide receivers. As you can see, there are some talented players there, but... As for skill and age, I don't really like any of my options. You see Jimmy Graham, Evan Ingram are some decent tight end options. And of course, you have the offensive line. I think Zach Martin is one of the best offensive linemen in the NFL. He's one of the only linemen with superstar development. If you guys want me to come out with a video on Madden 19 with every player in the game with superstar development, let me know because I can make that happen for you guys as we do take Zach Martin. And then... Went back to the defensive side of the ball, really was looking at edge rushers, and Everson Griffin just seemed to be the pick that made a lot of sense, but he is close to 30 years old, and I just really didn't want to go in that direction, even if I was never really going to play with this franchise, because of course this was captured before the game's even out by a long time, and I won't have access to any of these files, and Cam Chancellor's still on the board, but I, you know, I see his age, I don't even know if Cam Chancellor's going to be back in real life. And I figured, let's go with Jamal Adams coming off of a rookie season. He has decent development with Quick. And he's just a really, really solid option. So we're going to keep Landon Collins at strong safety and slide Jamal Adams over to free safety rather than have two pure strong safeties in Landon Collins and kill a Cam Chancellor. I decided not to go that route. And then there are still a lot of really, really good defensive tackles still on the board. So the positional value at this point wasn't really too high. But I think Sheldon Richardson is too much value to pass up on. He is still a decently young player, former NFL defensive rookie of the year. 
And he had a fantastic season last year with the Seattle Seahawks. And I figured, why not add him to our young defense? We've got guys like Darius Slay, Landon Collins. Of course, we just took Jamal Adams, Bobby Wagner, and now Sheldon Richardson. We have one of the youngest and best defenses in the NFL that I could even imagine. And then I was like, let's take a quarterback. Teddy Bridgewater is probably going to be the youngest, best option that we'll be able to take uh, in this draft. So it was pretty much a no-brainer for me at that point. Even though Teddy Bridgewater is not probably going to start for the Jets this year, as we do take Andrew Norwell, who got a massive contract from the Jacksonville Jaguars this past season. But Teddy Bridgewater just made a ton of sense. I think he's got that youth. He's got that upside. Why not take him to be our single caller? And what do we got to do? Protect him. Don't want him getting injured like he did in Minnesota. We take another offensive lineman, and that is Lane Johnson. Check out the face paint. That's a new feature this year. They added that face paint in. Um, the eye paint, I should say. The eye black. And I think that's a really, really cool looking one. And Lane Johnson, probably the best right tackle in football. Added him to our squad, maybe to be our left tackle. But probably keep him on that right side. And then we're going back to outside linebackers. I'm not sure we've taken one at this point. We haven't. Just that middle linebacker in B-Wags. But we're looking around. I'm trying to decide what scheme I want this, you know, uh, this team to play on the defensive side of the ball. We do have Bobby Wagner, who I think could fit into any defense we want whether it's 3-4 or 4-3 or even a hybrid as we take another cornerback. Didn't really like the outside linebacker options. Denzel Ward, top five pick for the Browns this year. He was the fourth overall selection in the 2018 NFL Draft. Really fast cornerback out of Ohio State. Maybe he'll uh, develop like Marshawn Lattimore did out of Ohio State this past season where he had a phenomenal rookie year that won him defensive rookie of the year honors as we're passing it up to another player that's quite young and Mike Williams didn't really play a lot faced injury but that upside is there that youth is there as you guys can see whenever I do a fantasy draft and I'm sure I'm going to do another one by the time Madden, teen, uh, Madden 19 actually comes out but I want to focus on youth if you're building a franchise for the future you want to take the youngest possible players and there's another one ASJ Austin Safarian Jenkins Good size, great athletic ability. He had a pretty good season for the Jets this past year. Uh, and then I believe, did he go down to the Bucks or from the Bucks? I think it's from the Bucks. They had Cameron Braith there for a while. I think Austin Sparrow and Jenkins went to the Jets and he actually played pretty well there. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've really uh, focused on any type of NFL action. But Samson Abukam is our next pick there. Our first outside linebacker. And he's a guy that I think could probably fit into either scheme. 3-4 four, or 4-3. Four, he just had the athletic profile that I think could fit into any one uh, of those schemes that we'd want to run. And then Martavis Bryant, another decently young player. We don't have to worry about suspensions in this franchise uh, in Madden 19. So Martavis Bryant makes a ton of sense. Just a big-bodied, physical, fast receiver with great actual ability. But if he can stay on the field, is a whole other issue. He might even be suspended for this entire next season uh, is what I'm hearing. And that I wanted to go back to the offensive line. Ryan Schrader made a lot of sense, but I didn't really like that so much. So I looked at center. You see Matt Paradis, you know, down there. These ratings are not final, I should say. That's why I'm definitely going to be doing another draft. But then I went with Weston Richburg, former New York Giant, which is my favorite team. And, of course, he is now with the San Francisco 49ers. And our offensive line is coming along really, really nicely. We have Lane Johnson. We took Zach Martin earlier. We have Weston Richburg now. Did I take somebody else? I may have. I think I took Andrew Norwell. So really, I guess all we'd be looking for now is a left tackle. And then figured we'd add Shaq Lawson to the list. Another former first-round pick who is very, very young. Uh, the Buffalo Bills in real life. And this team just really is coming together super nicely. And I like what they've done. And even though it's just like a small change uh, with the, the draft I think it makes it so much more enjoyable when you're taking these players as we do take Dalvin Tomlinson here. And they could have just limited these animations to the actual NFL draft in your franchises, but they added it also to the fantasy draft, which I think is very cool. I like the puzzle pieces so you can see which player fits exclusively into your scheme. As you see, Elvis Doomerville has it there, but there's no way I'm going to take a 34, 35-year-old player. Even though I, I used to love Elvis Doomerville uh, on, the, on the Broncos and on the Ravens. And then Dayon Buchanan would be our next selection, former safety out of, what is it, Washington State? Cougs? Believe so. Uh, but now he plays kind of that money backer role with the Arizona Cardinals. And we're just adding to our defense with youth, with speed, with potential. 
it's really, really coming along nicely. Dale Buchanan's a guy that can uh, definitely fit in our defense. If we want a 3-4 at middle linebacker, we could slide him over. Or in a 4-3 at outside linebacker. He's a good cover guy with good speed. Really a safety playing linebacker. And I think that's really uh, adding to the versatility of our defense potentially. And of course, it's all hypothetical because we won't actually be playing with these uh, with these players at this current time. But when I do a fantasy draft again, who knows? The draft could go very, very similarly. I'm taking the players that I like that I think are good and I think that are going to fit a lot. And Darren Lee is another one of those players that's super young, super athletic. I believe he ran like a 4-4-9 or a 4-4-6-40 a few years ago uh, coming out of Ohio State. Just a super, super athletic freak. He played a lot of edge at Ohio State. Another just, you know, pure linebacker. I think the Jets took him to be inside linebacker and he was injured for a while. Is Josh Doxson, another young player, former wide receiver at a TCU, currently of the Washington Redskins, as they have a lot of young talent. Of course, they took Darius Geis in the second round. He fell all the way to them. And uh, the Redskins are a team that's getting better. And if they have some of these players that start to improve and develop as they get older and more mature in the NFL, they're going to be potentially a dangerous team. We'll see what Alex Smith can do with them. Uh, this year hopefully not too much as a Giants fan I'm hoping the Giants do quite well but they are in a uh, tough spot playing in the same division uh, division as the defending champion Super Bowl Eagles but I figured this would be a pretty good time to simulate and show you guys what the team ends up looking like so of course John Gruden is back I don't know what he's looking at but he is clearly very interested he's got the visor on indoors and he can't even believe what he's seeing He's got to make a phone call. <laughs> I remember watching this the first time and I was like, what is John Gruden doing? And to me, it's only funnier that it's John Gruden. Like, it could be any coach, Andy Reid, or, you know, I guess Ben McAdoo's not there anymore. But it'd be pretty funny with him because he's an absolute clown. But with John Gruden, to me, everything's just so much more funny. And as you can see, this is the team that would end up uh, being drafted. So we have Cam Robinson at left tackle. Young player, not too bad there. ASJ, that offensive line is sick. Also, we drafted, let's see, Fat Rob, I guess is going to play fullback for us. We got LaShawn McCoy, Lorenzo Taliaferro, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Kellen Clemens. Actually, we have three current or former Jets quarterbacks. I didn't even realize at the time. Jimmy Ward was drafted to be our free safety, but of course we are going to move Jamal Adams over. Um, we have Lamine Barrows on there, Joshua Perry. Terrence Newman, 39-year-old at this point. And as you can see, I really love the uh, 3D HUDs that they've used, or 3D hubs, I should say. As you can see, you know, you're not moving the player anymore, but you're moving the the area around them. And it's just a whole lot more immersive to see them in the locker room, in my opinion. But guys, that's pretty much going to be the draft. Latroy Guillaume, I guess, is Daniel McCullers and Derek Shelby are noteworthy as well. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.